Well, welcome. church now today the bible story that we're going to have a look at is actually part of a letter most of the new testament uh, part of the bible is made up of letters to churches and this guy named paul wrote a whole bunch of those letters now our story today comes from the bible book of philippians it's a letter written to the church in a city called philippi now, think about what advice you'd write in a letter to our church. Mm. Well, the people of the church in Philippi loved Jesus and they loved Paul, but they had some problems. They fought with each other and they were really, really competitive. They all wanted to be the best. And people who seemed important, would never eat or spend time with lowly servants. And that behaviour didn't really reflect Jesus' heart. So Paul had some advice for them. Let's see what it was. Now we'll read Paul's letter, but first we need to know what life was like for Jesus in heaven. He had so much. He is God so he's equal with God and God is the king of everything. So let's make crowns to remind us how Jesus really is. Jesus also had divine privileges. That means he had all of God's power. Now let's make some lightning bolt to show that. In heaven, Jesus also probably didn't look like a human. He must have looked so much more glorious. We'll make glorious masks to help us imagine that. And Jesus lived in a place where no one ever dies. So let's make a leaf to remember us of life. You can write your birthday on your leaf to remind you of when you started your life. Now, our Bible passage is all about Jesus being selfless. Here's how we know that. Philippians 2, verses 5 to 6. In your lives you must think and act like Christ Jesus. Christ himself was like God in everything. He was equal with God, but he did not think that being equal with God was something to be held on to. Now, obviously we're not God. So that's not something we have to give up. But sometimes we might have status or popularity that makes us feel like we're better than other people. Think about a time you felt better than someone else. Now, Jesus had divine privileges, but he gave them up. So let's remove our crowns and... Cast it away. Jesus is selfless, so we are selfless. What would it look like to be selfless when others see you as important? Mm. What specific things would you do? Difficult to think, isn't it? Let's see what else Paul said about Jesus. Verse 7. He gave up his place with God and made himself nothing. We definitely don't have divine privileges or power. But there are times when maybe we're in charge or we have control. For example, if you get to the TV before your brother and he wants to watch something else, maybe then you can choose to give him his way. Or maybe you have a toy or a privilege that your uh, siblings or friends don't have. Think about a way you've, that makes you feel in control. Uh, we need to remove those lightning bolts now because Jesus is selfless and so are we. What would it look 
to be selfless when you have those privileges. You see, Jesus is selfless and he gave up his godly power to put us first. And he also did this. He was born as a man and became like a servant. Well, let's remove our masks then. And because Jesus is selfless, so we are selfless too. Jesus gave up his glorious presence in heaven to be human on earth. He went from a place better than we can imagine to a poor place on earth, a barn, a stable. That shows humility, which is another way to say to be selfless. Humility means lowering yourself to make others more important. So Jesus is selfless, he became human. And then... Verse 8. And when he was living as a man, he humbled himself and was fully obedient to God. He obeyed even what caused his death, death on the cross. Let's remove the leaves now. <coughs> Let's tear them up. You don't really have to literally give up your life for others like Jesus did. But you can show selflessness by giving up your own interest for others. Think of some examples of a way that you can give up your own interests. Jesus set up an amazing example for us of, on how to be selfless. When we truly appreciate what Jesus did for us, then it's easy to pass that on and to be selfless too. Let's listen to another part of our passage. Verses 3 to 4. When you do things, do not let selfishness or pride be your guide. Be humble and give more honour to others than to yourselves. Do not be interested only in your own life, but be interested in the lives of others. Now remember, the church in Philippi fought a lot and they competed to be the best. When you think of what Paul wrote to them about Jesus' example and the verses we've just read, why do you think it was an important message? And is it an important message for us today? See, the Philippians aren't, weren't the only ones to, who fought and tried to be the best. That's a big part of our culture too, isn't it? What we have to remember is that Jesus is selfless and we need to be selfless too. And Jesus can help us reflect his heart by putting others first. Now, after Jesus gave up everything, he received something awesome. Verses 9 to 11. So God raised Christ to the highest place. God made the name of Christ greater than any other name. God wants every knee to bow to Jesus, everyone in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. Everyone will say, Jesus Christ is our Lord, and bring glory to God the Father. Jesus is selfless, even though he deserved the highest honour. Eventually, he got that honour. We can show how important Jesus is by bowing before him. We can honour him by being selfless, and putting others first, learning from him. Jesus is selfless and we can be selfless too. Now, join me to uh, the Resource Center where there's plenty of activities, praise songs, crafts, uh, videos to watch. And I'm hoping to see you live in real life at Beckett Keys for the Gathering, where we have some amazing uh, Bible science experiments every week. See you next week. Bye.